Wait a minute, fella. Look here. Stand by. One for C-Lab, two for Troy Eagle, two for Wolverine to round out the trio in this episode. Everybody dies. Broadcasting live from inside the power band. It's the block, it's the block, it's the block. It's very fitting for a hardcore rap movie. Yeah. I know. I forget how the rest of the intro goes. Uh, it's the name of the show. Oh. In this episode. <laughs> everybody. In this episode, everybody dies. Welcome to the show, folks. I'm the host. I'm your host, <laughs> Mutton, along with my matriculated friends. With a four. <laughs> <laughs> with a four. Hang on, we're going to spell them all out so everybody really gets Vacuum. it. Vacuum. <laughs> and, and lap dance. Why, why are we doing... Yo. I don't know, I thought that <laughs> was the whole thing. We're doing matrix names for... This is our new names now. Because we spent too much time, like, doing Matrix names. <laughs> uh, this week we're talking about the 1992 classic. Le- legendary classic film that everyone knows about. Legendary classic film that nobody knows about. Trespass. Starring, this is like a, uh, this this starring is like a EBD all-stars, man. Wouldn't you guys agree? Oh, no doubt. Right? I mean, like, let's do the list real quick here. We've got Sadler. Awesome. We did uh, whatever that was we did with him in it. Uh, Die Hard 2 and Bill and Ted. Bill Paxton. You know it. A show legend. We love Bill Paxton. And then we got Ice Cube, Ice T, both of, both of the Ices <laughs> in T and Cube form. The best Ices. Uh, we got Art Bell, who is in Die Hard 2. With William Sadler, we got Tiny Lister, who is in Fifth Element. We got the president, yeah, the, yeah, the president, yeah, yes, exactly. Sir. Uh, we also got uh, let's see, the dude that was the drill sergeant in Hot Shots, <laughs> he was one of the gang members. We got Argyle from the first Die Hard, which blew my mind. I was like, who is that guy? I can't recognize him. And then at the end, I, I read it and was like, oh, that's where I know him from. Mm-hmm. Argyle, baby. So yeah, we got we. This is just like a delicious stew of EBD goodness. Whoa, man. whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't forget Glenn Plummer, also known as Jericho One. From yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Strange, Strange days. days. Oh shit, man! Nice one, dude. Yep. Totally. He was the sniper. That's right. That's where I. That's where I knew him from. Nice one, Benny. Death for me. Pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. We gotta have some kind of death noises now. Oh, yeah, we'll turn into, like, a Mexican radio station before you know it. Mm. Oh, hey, what's wrong with that, man? We'll just do a Wilhelm scream every time. Yeah, that won't get old. It'll, it'll never get old. Yeah, don't be racist against Mexicans, man. That's a good thing. I'm, I'm not at all racist against Mexicans. I just, uh, it, clearly, you've never listened to a Mexican radio station. <laughs> no, I have, dude. Never listen to a Mexican radio station. <laughs> mm. It's hilarious, dude. Uh, that's another death. Lots well, of sound effects. God, I'm so blown out. I didn't. Even, I just went to write the death, and I don't remember what the death was. Uh, you tell, you told a bad joke about Mexican radio stations. I don't know, man. I'm just going to write the death of the unknown. Okay. Wow, we're off to a rousing start, folks. Welcome to the show. DJ Frank Castle on Instagram recommended this one, and when he was talking, just like you did, about all the cast members and shit, it was like, dude, that sounds amazing. I for whatever reason I. Th- Got it stuck in my head that there was going to be pirates in this as well. I kind of made a leap oh beyond God. the treasure map into like pirate land. So I was hoping it was pirates versus gang members versus firemen. But I mean, it was still, you know. You're hoping Sloth was going to come swinging in on a rope. Yeah, hey, yeah. You guys. You're, maybe, maybe there might be a, a bone organ. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that what you just said, Chad, should be a movie. That's what I'm saying. You know, I was kind of, I don't know. I got to. Because my kid's all about pirates these days, so I just made that leap all on my own, and 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 I was a little bit disappointed. I I kind of just maybe just to 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 shift into high level a little bit. Like I thought this movie was going to be so much worse than it was that, that we could just beat the living shit out of it. Like it wasn't great by yes, means, but like I just totally thought it was going to be the most ridiculous thing ever, and it kind of wasn't. It kind of was, but it kind of mm. wasn't. 
Kind of was. I, I'm going to have to agree with you there. I was I was disappointed at how good the movie was. Like, I mean, it, I agree, but I mean, it wasn't good, but it, was, it wasn't like fucking horror show, you know? It wasn't like... Yeah, it's not like over the top, yeah. you know, or Ice Pirates. Like, it wasn't like that. Yeah. It was actually pretty damn good. And I think the problem is, is that while the premise is like the kind of the tired part, you know, it's kind of like, it's about greed, I get it. But like the talent in this movie all the way around is undeniable, dude. Like you've got Paxton, you've got Sadler, you got Art Bell, dude. You got all of these great guys that went on to do great things. Even like Zemeckis and Bob Gale and Walter Hill, like those guys are all great, man. They've done mm. some awesome movies that we've all loved. So it's kind of like, how could it be bad? You know, it's like, I don't know. It still ended up being kind of good, which kinda. leaves us with like a, a big freaking glass of mud, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> mm. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like a 90s dread yeah, it kind of is. Hmm. All in the building. It's kind of, I was getting dread vibes from it. You know what would be cool, man? Let's take the soundtrack out of this movie and put the dread soundtrack into this movie. And it would be totally badass. Sure. Think about that I mean, for a second. The soundtrack's kind of badass, man. I mean. It, well, you're right. It is. As it ice, is. Yeah, you're right. Ice tea and ice cube. Yes, dude, it's 90s, 90s gangster rap, dude. Ice-T is on point in this movie, man. You cannot deny that. I, I'll deny that. I I will not let you deny it. <laughs> His hair was on point, I'll tell you that much. His hair was indeed on point. Definitely. He had <laughs> some serious pimp hair going as on. As soon as that white bread Sadler so, dude pulled that uh, golden chalice out, he should have given it to Ice-T Ice for his pimp cup because he had some pimp definitely. hair. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but they shot each other instead. Yeah, so. why not, you know? Yeah, it kind of had like Dread, New Jack City, Demolition Man vibes. There's nothing futuristic about of the, this movie at all, but I don't know. Dude. It was a super, How did that even? I just because like I don't know Demolition Man. I, there's like that one gangster in this movie that looked like he was straight off the set of Prince in the New Power Generation music video. Like the dude had like the Definitely. gold coming down his arms and shit. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gave me like John Spartan's uniform vibes. I guess I don't know. I'm pulling it out of my ass here, but I'm gonna keep going. I like yeah. where your ass is going, so keep going there. <laughs> And then, you know, New Jack City kind of had that, like, in the ghetto kind of shit going on, which this is clearly trying to, like, push for. I don't know. And the Dread stuff, so. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you on that. Dude. Very, very thinly sliced ham. Come on, do, do the whole, like, improv yes and instead of uh, <laughs> shut, shutting me down here. I'm clearly uh, in the deep end of the pool and pulling, pulling uh, half-baked ideas out of my brain. No, 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 no. I like where your ass went with that whole thing. That was good. <laughs> you totally helped out my astute idea with your less astute ideas. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm starting to feel like this is one of those like moments from like uh, Billy Madison where the guy at the debate thing is like, we are all now dumber for having listened yeah, to what yeah, you said. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but that actually just kind of stopped me in my tracks. You're welcome. But hey, you know, me high live, Sue high live. Yeah, that's it. Wow. So, All right. you know, what? There it is. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Bye. See ya. See ya. Hope you have a good, good time. But Adam. See, see ya. Wow. This movie had some, this that movie had some tough competition, man, in 1992. I, <laughs> I don't even know what the competition was, but basically like any other movie that came out in this year would have been tough competition. Just kind of going off. Like, I, I was just curious, like when we were just talking a second ago, like, well, you know, this movie was kind of this and kind of that. Like, we had Ice-T and, like, all these guys were kind of coming up. It's like, and I was like, well, what else came out that year? So I just punched that up, and uh, I'll take a death for that ejection. Um, but, like, this was, this year we had Bram Stoker's Dracula, Batman Reservoir Dogs. Returns, Patriot Games, Reservoir Dogs, A River Runs Through It, Death Becomes Her. I mean, this list is pretty long. Alien 3, eh, Scent of a Woman, Under Siege. League of Their Own, Bodyguard, Lethal Weapon 3, Mighty Ducks, 
Wayne's World. <laughs> Chaplin, Ladybugs. Jesus, dude. There's a lot of Army of Darkness came out this year, dude. So singles, I don't know. I'm just like curious. There's a lot of good movies that came out this year for sure. That's one through 50 of 3,699. Should I keep going? <laughs> please, please, yeah, please do. Just, yeah, just, just, yeah. I'm going to take a nap. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> give, wake me up when you're done. I'm going to step out for a minute. Stay tuned next week, everybody, when we read IMDb. Again. I'm going to step out. I'll, I'll be back uh, next Saturday. Ooh, dude, Rodriguez came out with Mel Mariachi in this one. Nice. <laughs> Close the tab, bro. Close the tab, bro. Okay. Yes, I agree. There was, I mean, maybe we're all taking turns saying dumb shit because saying that this had stiff competition, considering how piss poor the movie was, it's like any other movie that came out this year would have beaten its ass at the box office, you know? Yeah, but I think that's part of my point is that like uh, we sort of just agreed at the beginning that this movie isn't that piss poor. It's like we wanted this movie to be terrible. Yeah, yeah. But it really wasn't as terrible as we thought, which left us with a glass of mud, as I said. It's you know like middling. I mean? like, yeah, that's the problem, is that it's kind of middling. So it's not like we can be like, dude, you know, this, that, and the other thing, dialogue, whatever. Like, it, that dialogue wasn't that terrible. Like, some of it was uh, questionable, for sure. But, you know, when William Sadler, like, did the whole, like, IRS thing, I was just like, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> <laughs> You know, like his his ex wife is Bill Paxton's wife or girlfriend. I was like, how weird is that? And you guys are like best buddies, and you work together. Like, don't <laughs> how tell realistic Janet. Is that okay? Yeah, dude. he's like, don't tell Janet about this. I don't want to have to report the taxes twice. You know the IRS. <laughs> you know, like now we're off on this whole thing about the IRS. It's like, dude, you're you've already talked about that too much. For That's some, casual mention, not not mm, seen. You know what I mean? <laughs> like for some on. totally weird reason, when you were saying like, "Yeah, don't tell Janet," I just pictured Janet sitting in front of like uh, the Ricky Lake show, counting her camel cash or something. And I don't. It was just like an interesting <laughs> random image out of nowhere. <laughs> Hey, Jenny, what are you doing? I'm counting my camel cash. <laughs> Have you seen who's on Ricky Lake today? Yeah, exactly. I got a thousand bucks in camel cash. <laughs> Give me one of those camel coats. Okay. I'm going to go get another lighter. Yeah. I mean, I realized that's a dead end cul de sac, but I just had to share that with the class. I, I thought it was pretty funny. I'm just, I, I'm sad that Ben didn't get on board and find it funny. <laughs> that's all right. Such is the way of things sometimes here on the show. I was thinking about uh, this dude, Iron Mike, I used to work with back in the day. And he used to collect everybody's Marlboro miles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now he lives in a red and white mansion in Florida. <laughs> he, no. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way Iron Mike is still kicking. <clears throat> it's just not possible. And now he has a red and white coffin. <laughs> You'd hand him to him. You'd say, thanks. I'm saving up for my iron lung. <laughs> and that's how he got iron mike that's amazing yeah come on dude is that real for real yes it is real for real <laughs> I fucking love that i had t i had uh, <laughs> full disclosure tons of camel cash oh, i same. still actually have some stashed somewhere same. and i had tons of marlboro miles i actually got some some of the the items with the marlboro miles yeah I still have the the uh, serious heavy duty backpack. I got a couple of the blankets. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? You have it still? I yeah, love my it. girl was like, "Dude, you got yeah." They, it was all this. It was this whole cowboy themed kind of situation. You know, it was like yeah. you get these like wool plaid cowboy blankets with like you know leather belt straps when you roll them up, so you could tie them to your horse. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> you, but in your case, we all know you live on a ranch. Yes, yeah, um, so you could tie them to your rollerblades. <laughs> yeah. I just like I'm picturing coming they, they over actually, and visiting you in in a few years once uh, <laughs> you know the world's back to normal, and you'd be like, "Come into my closet," and you open the door, and it's like rollerblades fall out, and there's fucking cod pieces <laughs> and blankets, and on the on the fucking uh, the hang up the the hanging rod, there's just fucking Back to the Future vest after Back to the Future vest. There you go. Totally. 
It's not that far off. I love. I love. Camel cash. I love how over the years we would learn more and more of the weird shit you still own. Yeah, totally, man. And and on this public show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you know it was interesting that they. I this joke would have been funnier before, but they also. Had I'm gonna a, tell it anyways. <laughs> red and white plaid horse. <laughs> can you repeat the joke that i'm probably not gonna laugh at you could get with the marlboro miles dude you get a what <laughs> a red and white plaid horse what yes the, what the fuck you t- <laughs> oh you're dead as a motherfucker dude <laughs> so, so dead dude Oh, the 90s. It was an interesting time to be a smoker. It was, yeah. like, <laughs> it was an interesting time to be a person, man. It's yeah, like, I don't know. You know, green stamps for cancer, participate, uh, <laughs> cancer <laughs> participation. I was saving up my camel cash to buy a camel-themed devil stick. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Nice. No. <laughs> I just that really wish that there was thing? such a thing. <laughs> Dude, a camel, a camel, a camel cigarettes devil stick would be amazing. Welcome to episode one forty one, the Camel Cash episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had to talk about Camel Cash someday, right? <laughs> the Camel Cash episode. You know, you know, at least two of the three of us are going to go on eBay and look for Camel Cash and Marlboro Miles m- merchandise. I don't need this. to, dude. I still have actual Camel Cash. <laughs> no, not Camel Cash. The shit you could buy with it. <laughs> I love it. I still have some of that too. I just, I kind of just don't know what I would do if I walked down the street and saw somebody wearing like a Marlboro Jack. I'd just be like. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> what, what, what what decision-making process did you go through there, man? The Joe Camel t-shirt? Yeah, definitely, dude. I think, uh, uh, just going back to, like, the camel cash for a second, like, I actually had a lot. <laughs> you what? Because <laughs> this is the camel cash episode. Uh, I had a lot of camel cash <sighs> items. My <laughs> This is great and all, but I hope we don't have like a ton of shit to say about the movie because because we're already out of time. We could be in for a long one. Spin your yarn, friend. I think like I, I saved the camel cash for years and years and years. You know, like it was one of those things where I was like, dude, I want to save this up, man. And when the world goes to shit, this will be the new <laughs> currency, man. <laughs> Totally. And I will be the overlord with all of the camo gas. No doubt. Wow. If my buddy who, you know, keeps trying to convince me to buy gold and silver only knew. <laughs> it was actually camo gas the whole time. <laughs> Dude, camel cash. Who knew? <laughs> Tarhigo, I was wrong the whole time. It was camel cash. The whole time, dude. <laughs> Camel Cash, dude. Who knew? Camel cash, bro, Camel Cash. That was the thing to invest in. <laughs> Makes total sense when you think about it. Let's start. Like, we need a Camel Cash, like, NFT. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's we should like start pushing Camel zillions. Cash, man. I would love that. Yeah. That's what we need. We need an EBD NFT. Well, can Camel Cash be the official currency of EBD? Ooh. Done. That is the best idea we've had in a long time. <laughs> so, at Val, in Valverde, that's what you pay for everything with. <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> Fuck crypto. We're going with camel Dude, cash. In my favorite. Like, okay, all right. I'm de- I, I'm decreeing on behalf of the podcast that camel cash is the only form of currency accepted in Valverde including credit cards and therefore all we all have very 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 small wallets yes <laughs> because camel cash was tiny it was just this teeny little it was like mini. little flip yes. phone zoolander flip phone we have teeny little wallets with full of full of camel cash i'm so on board with, with this a- Stack Definitely, of camel cash in there. I love where you're going with this, dude. Also, there's only one denomination, so it's just, yeah. just one. <laughs> it's a little hard, a little hard to make change, dude. But. What do you want to buy a car, man? <laughs> Fuck. I got. I'm gonna have to make a correction here because there were a few rare 
and I had some of them, and I may still, if I can find that that hoard of camel cash. There were a few five and ten dollar camel cash bucks. Whoa! Yeah, I'm and picturing they were like you full like full sized. I'm picturing you going up to your kid's room and being like, "Get off your bed!" and like lifting the bed up and cutting it open underneath, <laughs> and there's like a bunch of camel cash in there. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? I'm getting my camel cash. Shut up. <laughs> Just barking into your kid's room with a sledgehammer yeah. and smashing holes in the wall. Close your fucking Pulling eyes. the plats are down, and it's just stacks of fucking <laughs> camel cash. With, like, the Dad, little paper between- bands holding the wads of pay- money together. Totally. Oh, my God. Dad, what's in the wall? My camel cash. What else? <laughs> you like your camel what? <laughs> Oh, my God. I love it. So I'm going to pretend for the rest of the movie that they're actually looking for hordes of camel cash in a warehouse camel and not cash. gold. <laughs> that, dude, when you just thinking about that for one second makes this movie a thousand times better. <laughs> like, because Sadler gets really kind of, you know, he gets that, like, gold lust going, you know dude, what I mean? he turns like, hard. Like, yeah, it's mine, you know, like. He 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 done falls on his ass like a big dummy. He does. He does. Yeah, he yeah. does, man. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he's like, give me that rocket chair. I'm gonna stand on the fucking arms of it. Like, that's a great idea, dude. What are you reading about, Kev? What's that, dude? What? Who? Camel cash? Huh? Uh, yeah, I was reading about camel cash. Yeah. Just seeing what the street value is these days. I, I am, dude. They're tra- that shit is trading on crypto.com, man. Come on. <laughs> you got <laughs> Ethereum, Bitcoin, Shiba, and Camel Cash. <laughs> dude, if you started a blockchain Camel Coin, I reckon you could make a few bucks. I think there's something here. I don't know what it is, but there's an idea here. Yeah, I know I know what it is. It's a show that we were recording. It's a pill. <laughs> it gives worms. <laughs> to ex-girlfriends. To ex-girlfriends. So if you could close the tab. And participate in the show. I'd appreciate it. You just don't get it. Okay, so I, it's just important for all the folks at home. Yeah. And this is the last thing I'll say, then we'll move on. Uh, if you're wanting to come to Valverde and visit us, now that you know that the only denomination accepted is Camel Cash, you can go on Collectibles Online Daily and purchase bags of Camel Cash for pennies on the Camel Dollar. <laughs> So there you go. So what does a bag of camel cash cost? Uh, let's see. How much is in a bag of is is this like back in the medieval times where okay, like Okay, well, no. I mean, for 13.95 you can get vintage camel cash, 3 C notes, 1992 C-notes. lot of lot of 12 Joe Camel collectible factory fresh camel cash. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is the like kind of sleaze bag waifu website thing that we did you know like the waifu thing was really gross and nerdy and now this is just like the dude that always smells like cigarettes doing the equivalent i love it <laughs> the riddling guy who always smells like cigarettes factory fresh camel cash guys factory fresh i got factory fresh camel cash all you want 1395 three three easy installments Okay, seriously, let's move on. Just trespass. Feed me. Go. Go. There's something particularly awesome about death from Bill and Ted's excellent adventure being an angry redneck. I really appreciate it. Yes. That. Yes. Me too. Sadler was pretty hot at this time. He did Shawshank. He did uh, Bill and Ted's one and two, you know, so. That's Sadler. He's so hot right now. Oh, my God. Sadler is so hot right now. I wonder if he's ever worked with John Borman. Who was he in Shawshank? I, I can totally picture it. I just can't remember. Haywood. Like a prisoner or a guard? Yeah, no, no, no. He was a prisoner. Yeah, okay. It's been a while. I need to watch that again. Yeah, you should. He's got a really good role in that. He's so good in that. Haywood Jablomi. Um, Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. He's so good in it. In like a Liz, these cookies are so good kind of way. Yeah. So what was up with the opening scene here with a dude like self-immolating? What? What do you mean, the fire? Yeah, it was just like, I don't know. It was like a gang shooting video camera thing, like whatever, who gives a fuck. And then it's like backdraft, Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin or Billy Baldwin, or sure one of the fucking Baldwins runs in. And then the dude's like, I feel so naughty. And then just like walks into a fire. 
It's kind of random. Dude, freaking Baldwin's. That that was that was indeed random. It, it it just my mind was wandering and like what the fuck was up with the dude videotaping through the entire thing and why did that? I, I yeah. Like like I kept. I, I'm with you on that. I kept feeling like oh this is gonna turn up as evidence or you know like like it's gonna play some larger part and it just I don't know I guess the director wanted some gritty black and black and white shots with like a you know. A little border around it and a little recording thing. Like, I don't, I, there was like no purpose to it. Exactly. That's the problem with it. Is that it just goes nowhere? Yeah, there was nothing to it. Like, it, like it would have been like the oh, this is like the the guy. Like the next logical step would be like this dude's gonna post this on YouTube. You know what I mean? But YouTube didn't exist back then, so it just kind of or even like Ice Cube gets a hold of the camera and like watches someone bat- double cross him or some shit, and you know, like any anything. Right, something. Some sort of tie-in would have been good because it ended up being, as Jarhigo is so fond of saying, a giant nothing burger. Hmm, no doubt. Murderface, we got you your favorite thing for your birthday. Nothing. Disappointment. Yeah, I think uh, it was a giant nothing burger that went absolutely nowhere, and they should have just somehow tied it back in because that would have been a way, like a... Some sort of reveal of that being some sort of evidence or whatever that would have been way better than what actually happened. Which was Ice Cube smashing a camera and be like, "You a fucking dumbass!" I was like, "All right, yeah, basically." So yeah, I, I I don't know. I didn't get the whole videotaping thing. It was like just like having one of the homies like tape and everything, but it was also that like Ice Cube was always like hamming for the camera. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, that one scene when he's talking about Ice Cube, he's like, "Yo, man, I used to be like him. I used to be just like him when I was coming up. I was a hothead." Blah 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 blah. Like he was yeah. on Oprah or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was uh, Ricky so, Lake. Excuse me. Whatever. Sorry. Like he was on Ricky Lake or something. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, he was definitely him. Or that was Ice T, wasn't it? What did I say? You said Ice Cube. Sorry, I meant yeah, Ice T talking, nice talking about Ice Cube. That's a death for me, not ice death. terrible death. A glorious death. I'm going to write Ice Confusion. <laughs> <laughs> ice Pirates. Mm-hmm. Hip-hop pirate movie starring Ice T and Ice Cube. Ice Pirates. Ice Pirates, yeah. And the Pimp Robot. I'd watch that. I'd watch Ice T and Ice Cube as Pirates. I wonder if we take all the clips just of them filming with the camera and splice those out and then splice them together if we'd come up with some sort of secret story within the movie itself. Yeah, it's Blair Witch Project. There you go. With the snot bubbles. Going back to Sadler and his uh, gold lust, um, Paxton conversely sort of seemed to have this, like, (laughs) he became extremely euphoric. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what whenever the, whenever the cops would come around he's just like hey everybody it's the cops <laughs> <laughs> oh man hot diggity <laughs> yeah he would just kind of like bleep 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 up to the window yeah. it's kind of yeah, like a three year old like six, sticks their face yeah. against their window and he has like the pig nose squish nose thing going on <laughs> It's police. Exactly. Oh, the police are here finally. <laughs> There's one police officer to stop these 15 dudes. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's banging on the window. He's like, he should have been banging on the window going, hey, PR's my specialty. Exactly. <laughs> I love I love the first time he goes up to the window and the uh, Jericho one sniper shoots the window like seventy three times and the window doesn't break. It's just like right mm. and doesn't hit him. Oh, either. it's fucking great! I was a sharpshooter back in my military days. It's like okay, exposition, Jim. Here's your rifle, and then he doesn't hit shit except for the dude's brother, <laughs> except for Argyle. <laughs> Yeah, poor Argyle, man. He had poor a bad Argyle. rap in this movie, dude. Drug addict. Yeah, I felt I felt bad for Argyle right up until he jabs uh, old mate's jugular with a fucking heroin needle. I mean, that was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. But, you know, he was like strung out junkie, dirty rag in his mouth. Like, you know, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you do this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> 
I was hanging out with my brother, and, and yeah, it's kind of what shit. <laughs> well, I ran out of heroin, and then I kind of got caught by these rednecks, and then they kind of tied me up and put a dirty rag in my mouth and wouldn't let me have any more heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that sounds like a rough day, bud. <laughs> then my brother's buddy shot me. Then when I finally got three, I kind of jammed a needle into a bum's neck, but it was okay because I was clean. Yeah, it's fine. Then I went to Nakatomi Tower. <laughs> Sat in the basement with a giant stuffed teddy bear. Right? I kind of feel like, okay, so just like going back to Paxton for a second, like he kind of felt like if Gerald from Next of Kin, which was... T- God, such an abysmal disappointment of a movie. Left Chicago. Well, never got shot. And then left Chicago (laughs) and went and became a fireman in Arkansas. And then, you know, hooked up with Sadler and they went on a treasure hunting adventure in East St. Louis. Like, that's the kind of space he was inhabiting. If, if next to Kin and the Goonies, yeah, kind of combined forces. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's that's what this movie is. It's next of Kin meets Goonies. Yeah. I mean, Benny said it earlier with Sloth, but I'm definitely I'm definitely becoming more yes. enamored with that idea. Same here, same here. And I want to do a separate movie that's called Pirates versus Firemen versus Gang Members. Yeah. <laughs> It rolls off the tongue. Yeah, exactly. Versus one cop. Versus one man. One man. Who's assembled an ultimate team. No, no, it's the one cop who's assembled the ultimate move, jumping over the roof of a car. (laughs) That was pretty legit, to be fair. Hey, everybody. It's a cop. (laughs) The police are here. (laughs) Dude, when him and Saddle get into this, get into the scrap over that shit, it's the funniest shit ever, <laughs> right? <laughs> but wouldn't the cop have to be Paxton from Predator too? Yeah, no, well, def- it would be Danny Glover, of course. Yeah, Danny G. No, but what I'm saying is, wouldn't it be funny if that one cop, like, like don't worry, everybody, come like- down out of that building right now. <laughs> 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 don't make me run up there. I'm getting too old for this shit. Love it. No, what I'm saying is that, like, if, you know, Paxton's always like, hey, everybody, it's the cops. And, it's, and in double impact style, it's actually Paxton. Exactly. It's in double impact style. It's actually Paxton from Predator 2. In an ill-fitting shit brown suit from the future. Right. It is weird, like, Z Cavaricci suit or whatever. And he, like, rolls up. He's like, hey, it's PR's my specialty. Exactly. The scratchy video camera footage shows that he was never actually there. Whoa, totally. And that's the tie-in. That's what makes the video camera worthwhile. Think you just broke John Borman's brain. He was working some like some mental mojo shit in the background. Yeah, it's actually like a Sixth Sense prequel, and he died. He died on the street <laughs> trying to stop the gang members and was never there. Yeah, totally. I'm down with that. Whoa. Bill Paxton as Ghost Cop. <laughs> Wait, Bill Paxton was that a dog? Is ghost or was cop. that was the, was the, the ghost, ghost a cop? <laughs> ghost Cop. Uh, was, was, the, was the cop a ghost? Was uh, hmm. I don't know. Oh, is that is that supposed to be some kind of joke against me and my my ghost dog theory? Is that what that is? Are you yeah, making yeah, fun of me? Yeah, you're really. Astute ghost dog observation. You're really dumb, and we don't <laughs> like you. Oh, that was good stuff, man. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, ghost, ghost of Bill Paxton, shit brown future cop. I'm, I'm really getting into this movie. To be fair, dude, this is good. Just need, just needed a couple little, you know, little tightening up here and there. Yeah, it needed a couple of EBD tweaks. That's it, if I may. Yeah. So to to rehash, it's. Ghost Cop of Bill Paxton, Six Sense, meets Double Impact and Goonies and Next of Kin, where the treasure hoard is a giant bag of camel cash purchased from whatever, NostalgiaNerds.com or whatever website you said. That's where we are so far? Cam- CamelCash.com. <laughs> CamelCash.com. You know, oh man, just to just to put it out there, 
that you know that someone owns the domain camelcash.com and I can picture the moment when they were like, this is a good idea to buy this domain. I am going to look that up right now. <laughs> camelcash.com. If it's a, if it's available, which it's not going to be, we should buy it and have it redirect to our website. Dude, that is a sick idea. Yeah, we'll just do that with the uh, piles of camel, camel cash we're swimming around yeah, yeah. in right now. That's just pouring in. It's just can barely keep my head above it. Um, Chad, get ready to be excited because that is not taken. Are you kidding me? Camelcash.com. No, is I'm not. I just typed it, dude. Type it up on your laptop because <laughs> it's not. It's coming up with can't, can't reach reach this page, which means that. Oh, it's it doesn't nothing. mean it's not taken. What's the What's the URL? It's camelcash.com. There's like this stupid fucking Great site. use of podcasting time to do all <laughs> this. this. Good stuff what is right it? Here. Duck, duck, go or GoDaddy or whatever? GoDaddy. That does it, right? Camelcash.net is available. Camelcash with a K. You're right. Camelcash.com is taken. Damn it. All right. Glad we worked that out. We could get, do we could get camel, camelcash.net for 1299 we could get camelcamel.com for $6,700. All right, seriously, <laughs> focus Trinity. Can we get uh, camel.org, please? And I, I realize this is a bit crass, but, you know, if dollars have cents, can camel cash have camel toes? Like, can a camel toe be one one hundredth of a cash of a, of a singular unit? Why a toe? I don't get it. Why'd you choose that? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. <laughs> I was I was just moaning, and now now I'm laughing. Thank you, the camel toe, bro. Come on, dude. This is a family show, Chad. <laughs> Those sorts of crass comments and jokes are not welcome here. Right. It is not a family show. It's not not a family show, but it's not specifically a family show. You're right, Ben. I'm sorry. I make my kid listen to it. Does that count? Oh my god. I feel so sorry for your kid, dude. I don't make my kid listen to it. <laughs> That's Bullshit. not a cool dad move, by the way. No, it's not just... a cool dad. Exactly. That's called negligent dad. <laughs> cool dads give their kids their camel cash. All right. So uh, I hope nobody out there is a really like huge fan of this movie because they're not going to be. Come on. It's totally a piss take movie. It's got to be. I don't know about that. It's a piss take movie. Like it's. You want it to be good, but it isn't. Like, the cast is good, and the dialogue, like you said, it's like, it's not bad, but it's not fucking Shakespeare, bro. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. It gets a bit long in the tooth, you know? It's like fucking almost two hours long in the same goddamn three rooms. Yeah, it is. This movie is too long, that's for sure. Yeah, and the payoff is really not not all that great. No. It is kind of funny that the bums just kind of sitting there be like, Run! <laughs> Pack is like, wait, what? Oh, run! He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I, I love that he uh, he, he gaslights fucking Paxton. But That's pretty funny, considering the like everything else like that was building up. You know, like I don't know, it was just a uh, kind of a deflated balloon sort of an ending there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the C four building fire. I just you know, I don't quite understand why like the third act of the film is so focused on lighting the building on fire and then the two firemen have nothing to do with the fire like they don't do anything nothing they do they do nothing like i was like oh, all right the building's on fire so surely the firemen will like whip out some cool fireman shit and get the gold or something nope nothing the repelling thing was kind of cool from a fireman skill set point of view mm. the repelling thing was not that cool dude. well just from the point of view of it being like a fireman would know how to do it it was like okay yeah that's interesting that like fireman skills are being used here like i'm not saying it was like Mission Impossible fucking six or whatever, but no, it wasn't like suction suction cups on the window. But sure, no, yeah, it was all right. The whole chimney thing was great. You mean the whole chimney thing where they bust a hole in the chimney and look up and down at seventeen times, but don't do anything really for about forty minutes? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, I busted a hole in the chimney. It's like all right, cool. They'll go climb in the chimney and like they'll be able to shoot a scene in a different fucking room. Nope, nope, no, they won't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. then uh you know plastic explosives plastic man yeah that was i think every movie from that that really did. time every every action movie anyways everyone uh, was had obsessed with c4 in the 90s c4 oh dude totally above the law like that was like the central theme of the movie man yep and then the, i don't recall there actually ever being like a huge explosion like i just no 
Yeah, it was like a middling explosion. It was like it, 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 the building caught on fire more. Yeah. A middling movie with <laughs> middling explosions. <laughs> and, and like, middling dialogue, and <laughs> middling everything. Stoked the fire. It did. Yeah, they should have just called this middling. Yeah. I mean, Trespass is not really the most appropriate title. No. They did. Uh, I know I'm really, really reaching here, but they. Uh, you are. The original name for this movie was Looters, and nobody knew what a looter was. And then the L.A. riots happened right when this movie was going to come out, so they had to rename yes, it. Yes, so. totally. I read that little nug too, man. Looters. That would have been so dumb. Yeah. And they, I think, I, I don't know, like I kind of understand the spirit in which this movie was made. Like it was kind of like a, they were trying to harken back to these like Jack London kind of, you know, old school kind of old timey adventure sort of stories but i don't know something got lost in the translation but then something got saved by the uh excellent uh cast members and staff members yeah, but it's, it's still just turned out to be a movie. weird it is it's so weird and middling well, it's like, just I, like I, I, from the three white bread dudes that brought you all of the back to the future movies comes exactly a warehouse full of criminals and firemen it's just like all right yeah exactly man Boy, I tell you what. I tell you what. I guess this was written in the 70s as well. So it was written before Back to the Future 1. Mm, oh, it was? For real? Yeah, yeah. I think these guys wrote it way back in the day and then had their Back to the Future success and then came back to it, to the future, back to the past, to the future of the past. <laughs> oh, my God. But legit, it was written before Back to the Future. So it must have been, like, one of the early things they partnered up on, and then they just, like, sat in a fucking drawer somewhere, and then, I don't know. Because it doesn't make sense to write this after you've done all of the Back to the Future stuff, really. Good story. That was that was an interesting journey you just went on. You like that? Yeah, I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, any other, uh, any other bits and bobs that anyone wants to discuss in this movie? Because that's pretty much where we're at here kids wow bits and bobs uh no i just you know i like everybody that's in the movie you know tiny lister argyle like yeah it's good i don't know there's like was that a bronco that bronco was pretty sick the bronco was pretty sweet i wasn't surprised at all when i saw the bronco with the light rack pulling into the the uh broken down warehouse factory whatever yeah i enjoyed the uh Falling body through the glass at the top where it like breaks its back on the railing kind of scene. That was kind of random and mm. Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> that was good. There was some good some good falls. There's also the the other dude fell into the wires. Oh, that was cool. That was a really cool shot, actually. It was a cool set. This the whole abandoned factory thing, like even though I got a bit tired in terms of the movie taking too long, it was a really visually interesting set. No, mm. it was, but it, I didn't feel like they shot it right. Because, like, those old factories are really interesting, and there's a lot of, like, cool visual texture, you know what I mean, to places like that that are kind of blown yeah. out, you know? And I, I don't know, I felt like they they kept the camera work was really tight, like the shots were really tight in terms of the framing, you know? So it, it was like it didn't really, I don't know, it didn't really grab a lot of that, which kind of disappointed me. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know. Maybe that's just me because I I like old buildings like that. You know, like there's a brewery here that like they they basically turned an old factory into the brewery. You know what I mean? Like the you know like stuff like that. I like. I think that's cool. And there's a lot of shit like that here in Connecticut. Yes, a lot of textile, old textile mills and shit. I guess this place was actually turned into luxury apartments shortly after the movie was made. I used to live in one. Yeah, no luxury apartment. It was a condo that. Used to be a, a mill. I love those those kind of things, man. Yeah. It was cool, except it was like there was no insulation. So like uh, yeah. my roommate would like work out and the cops would show up like, Here, keep it down. <laughs> like, Jesus, really, dude? Yeah. We'll watch a movie and like the cops would show up. You guys gotta keep it down. Okay. Keep it down. Fuck you, bro. You guys gotta keep it down here. <laughs> and then when the yeah, cops showed up, you uh, went up to the window like Paxton and we were all excited about it? I did. <laughs> I did. And then my roommate tackled me and started beating the shit out of me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man. I like that they uh they they're trying to open up the floor with pickaxes. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Seemed like a 
Like it wasn't like they were trying to pry boards up with them or something. They were just going just at it. Smashing like, it. Yeah. Smash that, you know, not the most efficient. It's not dirt. No. So. <laughs> yeah, old hardwood floor. Yeah, no, not the most efficient for sure. I still did I still didn't get why they thought it was the floor and then they were like, No, it's the ceiling. Oh, it's we were the reading the map upside oh my down. God, but like it's the that ceiling. was so terrible. Right. But like you looked at the map when he showed it and it was like it didn't look like how could you even glean that that was the ceiling on the map? Like it made no sense. And it was dusty. He was lying on the floor. Oh, that's amazing. You know what, dude? I think if there we had some sort of metric to measure this, we probably talked about this movie twenty percent of this session. Uh huh. And we talked about Camel Cash for the other sixty uh, percent, and then twenty percent of shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then there was like five percent Marlboro Miles too. Yeah, totally. that's you'll true. forget yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> Mostly Camel Cash. Mostly Camel Cash. Mostly Camel Cash dot com. Yeah, I want the domain to be camelcash.com.com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get right on that. I'll get Jimmy Google on that. He's been busy. Why can't that be a thing? All right, then. Whip out your nuggets. You're, uh, whoa, that was frisky. You, uh, you shared the music video. That's probably worth saying that the song is pretty 90s doubt. I really kind of dug the, uh, it's, it's a, Ice yeah, it's a good track. Song. Totally, man. When Ice-T and Ice Cube get together, the combination is explosive. C4 explosive. Trespass. Written by the guys that brought you Back to the Future. I don't got any nuggets, bro. I read all the uh, I read all the shit, and it's just like, yeah, and this is all boring. Yeah, I'm so upset about the middlingness of this movie. It's all right. We had some fun. Yeah, we did. The camel cash conversation amused me a great deal. The fact that Argyle is a heroin addict in this uh, makes me really happy. Like, when I found out that it was Argyle, I was super pumped. Yeah, I did like that, too. It made me, it was delightful. So the Argyle delight and the camel cash conversation here is well worth the price of admission. There you go, folks. Listen to it again. It'll cost you one camel dollar. That's it. Yeah, the fact that this one is so deeply steeped in EBD DNA... Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it it ties the room together, as it were. Um, <laughs> <laughs> totally, probably, totally. I love it. It'll probably end up being spoken about better in <laughs> future. Yeah, we'll, we, we'll reference the hell out of it. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah, we probably should have said that when we actually did the show. Like that. That's going to be one of those. So, or no, sorry, that won't happen. We'll just keep talking about camel cash. That also will happen. Mm. <laughs> Camel cash for the next ten episodes, and it it won't get old. Not a, no no never. it never does. It'll, it'll be just never. as funny every time. Every time. Every damn time. Yeah, chocolate rain. Uh, deaths. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> death. Dude, Bor- Borman even got brought up in this episode. Yeah, Jesus he did. Christ. I kind of cut it off before we got to the basket of fries. To be fair, no, it was fine. We don't have to have a basket of fries every time John comes over. That's true. Well, wait, what's what's a visit from John Borman without a basket of fries? Dude, John Borman is all about fries. Uh, so we had last week. I was excited. I was like, deaths are back. I was very excited about last week's deaths. Uh, this week, I feel like we did a little bit of a backslide. All the deaths were mine. Um, uh huh. I had the death of the unknown, which then when I remembered what it actually was, was the Jericho one death because I totally forgot that guy when I was rattling off the EBD all stars in the beginning of this movie. You also had another death by introducing us all by our Matrix names. What? No, that wasn't a death. It's a Matrix that was death. Great. Oh shit! You're right. That's a death right there. Yeah, it's a death. <laughs> wow, man. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Freed up from one landmine just to step on another. <laughs> exactly right, man. That's it. I suppose I suppose technically me asking if you'd watch the latest Boba Fett is a Star Wars death. Whether that makes it into the show or not, I don't know. Uh okay. Uh, I guess so. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. God, I got this coat, man, that uh <laughs> Yeah. My girl my girl got me last summer when it was on the cheap. And it's like a serious cold weather coat it's you know as ben knows it's like literally was zero degrees here today it was so goddamn cold and oh it was bad oh it was terrible and i I had to wear that thing outside you know and it's got fur around the edge of the hood 
And the entire day, I was dying for somebody to say, <laughs> your Tauntaun will die before you hit the first marker. <laughs> just so I could say, hell. yeah, well, then I'll see you in hell. Yeah. You could have you could have just dropped the like, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. So so are, what are you what are you saying that you're going to go around intentionally yelling that at anyone with a fur ribbed coat? And I really hope that you do. No, no, I want somebody to say that to me I know. so I can say that, I, and I'll see you. I now. want you to flip that on its head, and I want you to go around screaming at people with fur coats because only a couple of them, maybe one, will get it, and you'll just look like this crazed lunatic who's screaming at people with fur-lined hoods. Uh, I think you're onto something there, man. If it's if it's any consolation, I sent a text to the same effect to my coworker, and they did not respond in kind. I love so. it. Damn it. But I li- that's what I like about it. it's as, one of those as things. He was where going in on this shit. And, yeah. You know, it's like, okay, but your Tauntaun's going to freeze before you hit the first marker. <laughs> crickets. I just love I it. I got fucking crickets. I love a nerd reference or a joke where you're the only one laughing or getting it because it's just like, you know what, guys? Fuck you. This is great. Fuck you for not getting my joke. This is a good joke. One hand trying to clap. Just. Yeah. I love it. Ratings? Uh, we never actually finished the deaths. Oh, that's a death. That uh, is a death, dude. Do we have to? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So we the, the very fresh Chad not finishing the deaths death. Uh, the Boba Fett ch- death that was Chad. Me the Matrix intro. Uh, I'm going backwards. The ice con- ice tea ice cube confusion moment for me that was definitely a death. Uh, the Marlboro horse, which I thought was pretty funny, but of course I waited too long, and then it was totally stupid. Yeah, it was not funny. Uh, then I ejected. I had a ejection death on uh, what other movies <laughs> were competing with this, which was talk about an epic waste of time. Then the Mexican radio death, and then I had the death of the unknown, which is also the Jericho one death. Word. And Ben made it through the fire unscathed, which is a, a death in and of itself. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Whoa. So I can't decide whether this. Uh, uh, Marv, didn't didn't we say good morning yesterday? <laughs> Luke Skywalker, you fucking inbred. Yeah, this is what we do when we're really tired. Is we start riffing on this movie <laughs> during a different movie. So in in the rating space, I can't decide. Whether this movie is better than Rima Williams or not, I kind of think it might be. Wait, say that again? It's a Rima Williams? What? A Rima Williams. No, I'm 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 looking at the algo and I'm trying to decide whether this this movie is better than Rima Williams or whether Rima Williams is better than it. I think Rima might be better. I can't decide. What do you think? That's a tough one, man. I don't know. Remo has like a really major league dumb factor going on. Yeah, that's it. Hmm. And Captain Janeway and George Co. But I don't know, man. This movie's got like a lot of great players. It's just kind of middling. Yeah, it is. It I'm, is. I'm going. I mean, it's purely because of nostalgia, but it has to be. It has to be Remo yeah. for me. I have no nostalgia, and I think it has to be Remo. It's just, hmm. it's just dumber and funnier. I honestly just wanted this to be dumber. I do. I am feeling you there. All right. Well, in that vein. Uh, Remo Williams is a 3.6, and this is beneath Remo Williams, also with a 3.6. It is above The Void, Bloodshot, and Thor The Dark World. Interesting. Bloodshot? Wow, I haven't thought about that in a while. It's got a twist. What did I think of this movie? I don't know. I Benny, what did you rate this movie? Um, I'm going to go with like a 7.5. Nice. Um, I, I watched this in two halves so i would you know literally pretty much cut it clean in half um i was really enjoying the first half Mm. the second half i was kind of like all right come on come on dude that's literally exactly how i felt yeah come on come on come on come on come on so you know like but um it was enjoyable you know like it's an enjoyable watch it's a it's a good you know 90s action schlock fest that you just you know you don't get those kind of movies anymore and it's always fun to see a new one or one that you haven't seen before yeah um i thought ice tea and ice cube did uh actually were a little more on point even than uh sadler and and paxson 
Yeah, I'm going to agree with that. Totally. As far, like, I feel like, you know, like they were good, but I felt like they were phoning in a little bit, whereas like, you know, T and Cube were like hungry and, and after it, you know, so that was interesting to see. I don't know. I like the fact that like nobody, there's kind of like no good guy or no bad guy in the in the thing. And it's just sort of, you know, it's really like greed winning out, except for Bill Paxson, who was like the goody two shoes. Yeah. Hey, everybody is the cops. He's really into <laughs> cops. <laughs> uh he he flunked out of the academy and just became a uh, fireman instead one of those yep yep but, uh, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah 7.5 i like it i like that i'm gonna say a seven uh i i kind of i dig the spirit of this sort of old-timey adventure story but it didn't really translate well i thought the set and the setting were cool um, you know, the kind of looking for gold, everybody gets greedy thing was a little, blech. but you know, like the director and the writers and all that are like, you know, these guys are on point and the cast was awesome. And I definitely agree with Ben. I feel like Cube and T were definitely more on point almost than Sadler and Paxton. So, uh, I'm going to go with a seven. Yeah. I like it. It's gold. It's gold. It's camel cash. And camel cash, dude. And maybe maybe the point is is that I wanted this movie to not be a seven. Maybe I wanted it to be like a four that was fucking dumb and funny. That's, yeah, that's where I was at. They did a good job-ish. Yeah, they did do a good job. Yeah, cast is good. Just the story and the pacing are a little, a little uh, off. Off, yeah. Pacing, sluggish, and story a little off. Yeah. Yep. I had to cram those fucking plastic explosives in there. Definitely. But word to to Frank Castle for uh for bringing this EBD chestnut to our attention. Like I think the fact that there's so many red strings thumbtacked onto EBD here is pretty amazing. I like it. Wait a second. Wait, does somebody have like a board in their house with like a giant layout of like weird movies and red strings with pins going all over it and us in the middle? You know, you know somebody does. The whole room. Dude. That is sick. Somebody needs to keep track of this crazy shit we come up with every week. <sighs> Fucking hey, totally. Mm. Thank the Lord for that. Yeah. I was just thinking today about, you know, Jericho one in this movie and how strange days was supposed to sort of kick off like a series of uh, like cyberpunk movies that we just didn't do. Like we just never, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we just dropped it. it and just, <laughs> what would be the, yeah, sure. But you know, whatever. I just, it is funny. There's countless things that we've just left on the floor like that. Totally. We, uh, you know, we're all ADD heads. We lose our focus and just uh, talk about random shit. It's one of our superpowers. Well, I guess. I don't, I've been working all day, so I'm just shredded meat. Shredded wheat. Shredded oatmeal. Uh, steel cut oats. Steel cut. Gotta be steel cut, man. Shredder. Shreddy Kruger. Yeah. Anyway. All right, then. Oh, wait, I forgot to ask uh, Chad Lab what the next uh, show is. What are we doing next week? We are doing The Witcher next week. Dude. Was that John Borman? When there's a creature in your bog or woods, who are you going to call? John Borman. Uh... Season two of The Witcher, starring John Borman and a grain. <laughs> Yeah, Skier had to learn that one so she could do her special Ooh, dance. Yeah. E grain. Totally, man. And he matched it up with Toss a coin to your witcher. Oh, very plenty. There you go. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that one's stuck in your head for the next no doubt. Month. Done and done. All right. So Witcher next week. Thanks for joining us for uh Trespass. Trespass. Some of you might feel that this episode was as middling as the movie itself <laughs> some of you will have loved it. <laughs> maybe so maybe not i can only imagine yes thank you all we love you and to all a good night and uh don't forget we've got our exciting best of or what the hell do we call it the top five or what we gotta do that soon oh yeah i forgot about that yeah we should probably do Shit, one. we do that every january right uh, it's, it's a little late for that what you talking about willis I hate you talking about, those. boy. Why? <laughs>
I just do. You know why? Because it's never really what the shit, like what it should be. Like, I'm always like, oh, oh, fuck that thing. Like, I didn't do my homework. I didn't like take notes. And then, uh, you know, when I get to it at the end, I just write some shit down that I'm thinking of. And, you know, not that it's bad, but it's not the top five or whatever, you know. Maybe one of them is or two, or maybe even three, but probably not all five. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's more of a things I liked show as opposed to needing to be actually representative of the top five. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think uh, exactly. I just think it's like, you know, this is what I dug last year. Like, it was fun. I always thought you liked it. I always like your picks, too, dude. Now I'm really bummed Witcher out. Witcher was one of them. Exactly. That's true. I learned so much about that game from that episode. It wasn't another one. It wasn't last year's top five where Kev shit all over your pot of stew. He did. Like, there were some pretty good episodes, dude. Yeah, that was pretty damn funny. Dude. That's probably why you hate him is because Kev completely fucking destroyed your pick. Made it so you couldn't <laughs> talk about it for half an hour. <laughs> fucking pot of stew. That's right. It was raised by wolves, man. And I totally put the kibosh on it with the pot of stew. And Ben finally threw up his arms. I love like, it. You yeah. like edited the show and felt so bad for being such a douchebag that you had to apologize to Ben the next time we spoke. It was great. <laughs> That's what the show's about. A pot of stew. <laughs> fuck i love it yeah it was good all right whatever i guess we're not doing that so uh don't look forward to that anybody <laughs> and uh, we'll come up with something else wow. <laughs> i don't know do i do i wield <laughs> supreme executive authority in this podcast that's pretty fucking you sweet just you did. got veto power you just bro took your, you apparently took your, so yeah your scepter of power and just like one mighty swoop you swatted us out of the way i hope i don't become you know drunk with power that's it start putting the kibosh and all kinds of things it's okay man i i saw spider-man somebody needs to take the lead was it any good no no just the you know the great power great responsibility oh gotcha uh, uncle ben thing unky ben unky ben i won't be a bad spider-man with my newfound power no uh, okay, so, uh, yeah. Uh, bye. <laughs> See ya. And bye. And that's gonna wrap up this week's episode, folks. If you'd like to find, uh, the show notes for this episode, you can find them in your podcast app O choice or on our website, ebd.fm forward slash episodes forward slash 141. Also, um, if you want to support us, folks, rate us and review us on iTunes. Seriously. And, of course, tell your friends to check out the show. You can also chuck a buck. Patreon.com forward slash EBD podcast. Chuck us a buck. Uh, Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're everywhere, man. Smash that like button. We use the handle EBD podcast, so check us out. Thanks for joining us for Trespass. Next week, we'll see you for The Witcher. So long for now, folks. Bye-bye. Beedy, beedy, beedy. Stop into it.